there guys so it's currently tuesday the 9th of april um and i thought i would vlog it's currently half two um i had my lunch about half one finished eating about two and then i've just been like catching up on messages scrolling etc for a little bit just to chill out like it's like my lunch break essentially um and now i'm gonna make an iced coffee and crack on with some bits I don't know why, but when I'm holding the camera, I lose my train of thought more. <laughs> I don't know why that stops me from being able to concentrate. I'll pop you up somewhere in a second. I'm trying to make my coffee and then go back in the office. I got a new um, ice bucket as well. How cute is this? So like the one we had before was just an old like food container. It had like a label on the side. It was so unesthetically pleasing. Not that that's the end of the world, but you know, this is so pretty. It's just like a plain, it's just way more aesthetically pleasing. It's just literally a plain one. And it's got like this little handle at the front. So you can just grab it out and put it back in. So I'm back in my office now. Um, I'm just gonna crack on with a few bits. I I spoke in some footage the other day about me downloading this new app for my finances and it's so good, but it's really difficult because it puts a transaction into a category for you. But if you've got like, say for example, you have like, a beauty category and then you have like a food category but then you go to Lidl and you buy a house product and beauty products and your weekly shop that's in one transaction and you can't separate that transaction into more than one category and that's the only thing that I think that app is seriously missing like I don't get how it can do everything but that and I don't know if they've just not thought of that or what but it's really frustrating like you should be able to split a bill or split a transaction between categories um so I'm really struggling to like, like basically the idea is that I wanted to get a report for each month of this year on my spending into each of my categories that I have. Um, I have like five categories, but then I have subcategories in them ones. And I don't know how to do that now because like in the past, I've just done transactions together. Whereas in the future, I will be mindful of that and I'll keep transactions separate so I can get a better accurate, um, display of my spending into categories because i'll try and keep transactions separate but obviously i didn't do that earlier this year so i'm really struggling to pull reports on the beginning of this year and i don't know whether to manually go in and go like i can analyze my spending and put, and just manually write it into a category do you get what i mean but that's just going to take so much time and I was avoiding doing that. That's after, I'll probably, I'll either have to export my bank details, like my transactions into an Excel for each of my banks and then categorise it like that and then sum it maybe or print off all my bank statements and highlight them into categories. I don't know, but like in any case, it's just going to be a massive headache and a big task that I'm really wanting to avoid this is why i'm trying to find more sustainable ways going forward years and years ago i used to print my bank statement off and then highlight it into um, categories and do it that way and then obviously i moved forward into being a little bit more digital um and i would like export my bank data into an excel but that didn't really work either because the way that it export was just so unuser friendly. And then I went into a phase of like manually updating my Excel every um, day or once a week for my transactions for that week. But like, I just hate doing that. Like I just hate having to manually do it. It's just so much maintenance, but I want to be so on top of my spending. Like so many people say to me, well, just don't analyze your spending that much or don't have a record of it. Like just look through or what, but I just can't do any of that. Like I just can't. I like being like hyper aware and know what's going on with my money. Like I'll, otherwise I just get highly anxious. I don't understand how people make decisions without knowing 
their finances like I just I just can't do it I, I wish I was a lot more carefree <laughs> sometimes but I'm just not I'm such an uptight person and I have to know that like where my money's going even down to like what I used to do is obviously when I was doing this on Excel before I got um that app I used to like budget six months ahead so I'd do a tab for each month and then I'd write like what income I'm expecting and then I would write all the outgoings outgoings that i'm expecting and how i make decisions and i'll budget that in ahead like if i commit to a plan with someone or anything I, it goes in my finance straight away so i've allocated for that money like i hate when you come to a month when you're like oh i forgot i told that person we'd go for dinner and i told that person this and i committed to this and you've not thought about the expenses at all like i cannot live in that place i just can't um so i say all this to say that i'm trying to pull a report for the last three months but i just don't know i think i'm just gonna have to admit defeat and like do it a manually difficult way if anyone has any apps or ideas about this like please let me know um but going forward this app should work because i can keep transactions separate like i know what my categories are and i only keep transactions into them categories and it will keep it simple and then it also like once you've submitted that merchant or that transaction to that category you can also select all following as well so when i got petrol the other day it already put that in my petrol category because i've selected that merchant to go in that category so any petrol that i get from bp or any transactions that come out of my account at BP will go straight into my petrol because it knows that that merchant is a pe like goes into that category. So it's great. Like going forward, I know it's going to be so simplistic, and I'm just going to see these summaries for each category, which is what I want to see. But going backwards is really difficult, and this is where I'm really uptight because I can't just let go and go. Well, it's in the past anyway. It doesn't matter. No, like that's three months of the year that I've got no report for, and I don't know what I've spent if I've overspent anything it's just really i want to know that <laughs> the other thing that i'm struggling with with this app is that you can't put in like one-off payments in the future you can't schedule one off as i understand it at the minute i'm gonna have a look a further look into this but you can't put in one-off payments so for example what i mean by that is it will tell you everything that's coming out between your pay cycle or between your income cycle but it will only allow you to put in bills there. So for example, between one week to the next, or let's go monthly, because most people do monthly, um, so like in April, it's got, you're going to get paid this on this date, and you've got all of this coming out, because it recognises that these things come out each month. So it's made them into a bill for you, right? So like my phone bill, or my car insurance, like it's seen that they come out each month, I've made that merchant into a bill called car insurance and it's scheduled that payment in. So like it tells you this is everything you've got coming out. This is what you'll have at the end of your bills. But what if like I've committed to dinner? I can't put that in because it's not a reoccurring payment. It's not a bill. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't and you can't just add in. If you add in a new bill, the way that you add in a new bill is by selecting a past transaction. Do you know what I mean? So you can't add, like you should be able to add in ad hoc bills or one off bills. So I'm just praying. Like I mean, obviously there's not being able to split transactions. There's a way around that. I will just make sure I split transactions. But I if I can't add in ad hoc payments, then this isn't going to work for me because I'm not. I, I, I am terrible. Like I can't remember anything. I cannot remember a thing. That's why I have all these systems, <laughs> and my life gets really chaotic if I don't do these things is why i've like done them for the however long i have now i don't know i just it, i'm just gonna put it down to i've not really fully explored the app because surely it can do these things and don't like it, i just don't understand why it wouldn't um my brother's got it as well and like as you can see i get a bit more high rate and i'm a little bit more short tempered my brother's really patient so <laughs> i can also text him and be like have you worked out this feature because he is so like he'll do diligently go through it all um and he won't get like emotional he'll just generally like look at it from a logical perspective whereas i get frustrated and then we'll just shut the app down and think and then i'll come back to it like i'm <laughs> really impatient and short tempered um so it could just be that i've not been patient enough and explored it well enough which i'm praying uh, but that is what i'm going to do right now basically i'm going to try and work out what i'm going to do about the past three months and 
how I can add in ad hoc payments going forward. Like birthdays, I like to add in. So like I say, I, I will budget for the next six months. I will look at everyone's birthday that's coming up. I'll split it over. Like I budget for everything like that. Like nothing, no random ad hoc payments come in. And I like, don't get me wrong, obviously within reason, like if my tire goes, there's an ad hoc payment I wasn't expecting or whatever. But I like to try and be as in control as possible um, and organized as possible. So it's currently 10 to 5. Um, I've just been sitting here cracking on with some bits that I said I was going to. I have got my head around what I'm going to do about my financial reports for the beginning of this year. So I've made movement with that. And I'm working on my categories really precisely so they can go into my app. So moving forward, I don't have this issue. And it will automatically categorise them well. Um, because I don't want to just go, oh, here's a few categories. And then later go oh no I wanted to track that like my categories are there's a lot of them and they're really detailed because I think when you set something up right then it's easier to maintain like if I set this up right I'll be able to track so many different categories and it will be so um organic because I've assigned that transaction or merchant to that category and it will just all go smoothly but i think that if i'm lazy right now and i only set up a handful of categories and i and i don't keep it as detailed then later i'm gonna think oh but i want a breakdown of that and i want a breakdown of that and i'm gonna struggle to pull that data because i didn't go into in-depth categories now obviously it's in-depth to set up and it's taken up um quite a bit of my time at the moment but i know that this is so worth me investing my time into because it will be so systematic going forward and i still don't know if i can add in ad hoc payments um so if but the reason why i think i might be able to still do this is because i haven't set up my budget yet so your budget and your bills are different um so as i said earlier for you to set up a bill it, it, you have to have a past transaction to acknowledge that this comes out each month um, and it, and you can't make something a one-off for an ad hoc payment because a bill is something that's reoccurring, right? But once I set up my budget, I might be able to add in like things to that budget, if that makes sense. Like I haven't worked out that yet. I haven't done anything on the budget yet because you can't do a budget without categories because you've got to set a budget for each category. So... I'm sorting my categories, putting them onto it. Then I can do the budget. And then hopefully once I've sorted out the budget, it, it will allow me to add in ad hoc payments to each category in my budget for a certain month or etc. cetera. Um, and then if I can also project my budget for like the next couple of months, the next six months, the next year, like I want to be able to project my budget forward, then literally this app will have absolutely everything and I will actually cry with happiness you but yeah I'm really excited to like have my budget finalized and stuff and like move forward with it um like I say I've sorted out my past spending for the last three months so that's like a big weight off my mind um and I know what I want to do because I have like a routine in for once a month to like assess my expenses and my finances but I don't actually know what that means at the minute because I haven't everything's all over the place. So now I'm understanding this app more and I'm getting my head around everything. I'm able to like write down what I actually want to do in their monthly reviews now um, because it's just changed so much because my systems and everything have changed so much. Um, so yeah, but it's such a positive because I know that this will be so much more sustainable and reduce my time and maintenance, etc. so much. Also gone through and sorted all of my footage out, like I said, um, my desktop was a mess again obviously this is something that's new to me youtube so i didn't know i didn't have systems and i didn't know the best way to manage all my like footage and where to store that etc um but now every time like i film or every time like my um, memory card gets full i have offloaded it onto my computer and then i've got like a folder that says to edit like a completed one so i know because you get honestly you'd be surprised how quick you can get lost with clips and what ones you've included in something what ones you haven't um especially when you're vlogging like i think when you do a sit down video it's completely different because you have x amount of footage like it's filmed there and then and that's it um it's all filmed within a certain time frame essentially like within one day it's, it's all in one place but when you're like vlogging you can get confused with what days you filmed what days you didn't what 
clips you included in the last vlog, what needs to still be edited, what needs to still go live, what you've used, what you haven't, etc. So I've got like a bit of a system now and I offload them onto my editing folder and then I know what's been edited and what needs to go live, etc. And it's like becoming more systematic. So I love that. Um, like I love being in a place where things are habitual because it's so hard for me to remember or think sometimes like so if things are habitual i just love being in that flow state of just it's not where did i put that where am i storing that what am i doing it's just it's natural you don't have to think it's a habit it's habitual it's you're in a flow so yeah i've sorted all the content out and now i can actually start editing i've been like really stressing that i haven't got anything to upload or any content i have so many clips i do this all the time like i don't realize how much i film um even like right now this clip is 12 minutes but i just think oh i have a couple couple minute videos that's it and it's not gonna make a whole vlog and <laughs> i always think that yeah i've made a lot of progress i'm gonna keep working on that um sort out these clips that i have and see what i can get up next well, this week so yeah but i'll keep you guys posted i'm gonna be doing this i'm still watching pretty little liars at the minute um which is so funny because I filmed this like two weeks ago and was like, I've just started it. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I'm literally on like season, halfway through season four. I'm obviously loving it. Like, literally, been, I'm like right at the bit that I love. Um, it's really weird because like something will happen. There's some things that have happened that I think, how on earth have I forgot that storyline? Like, how have I completely forgot that? Like, that's such a big thing. Um, and then there's other things where like a character comes in and you're like, oh yeah like, and you just see everything that's happened i feel like i haven't watched something like this in a while i'm either i can recite every word for you i haven't watched this yet that's the place that i've been in a lot recently and when i watched one tree hill it was similar one tree hill and pretty little liars it's one of them things that i haven't watched in years and it's like oh yeah how did i forget that story and some things you remember you feel like you're getting deja vu that's like the only way i can explain it and there's other storylines that i feel like were longer than they were like when toby was a i thought that was way longer than it was i thought he was a for like a while like quite a while like how mona was and i thought it was more serious but it's not it's literally like a handful of episodes obviously he's gone off for a couple of months but you only see him as a for a handful of episodes and then it's all back to normal and like him and spencer are fine do you know what i mean and i remember like spencer pretending to be a and that's literally only for like one episode maybe um because she wants to get to why toby's like part of the a team and she wants to understand everything so she joins the team for like a day and i don't know i thought that was longer and i didn't like them ideas so i was like oh am i gonna enjoy this because i remember that and i don't like that storyline there's also storylines that I thought I wasn't going to like. And like you rewatch it and you think, actually, no, that does make sense for that to happen. Like when I first watched it, I felt a bit like, oh, making Toby A is just like another person. Do you know what I mean? Like we've gone through Mona and now it's Toby. And like I, I think of something different. Do you know what I mean? I just felt it was a bit repetitive. But now watching it this time, it makes sense. Like I felt like, in the past or oh, toby wouldn't be a like that wouldn't happen it was just something to try and like surprise the viewers but no he would like if when i was watching it this time like spencer not letting him in like not telling him any details not and his attitude was well i'll go find out for myself then and he did and he went and find out for himself and he joined the, the a teams in order to just try and find information and get to the bottom of who is obviously leading this whatever you want to call it cult organization whatever the a team will call it um and now i watch that and think yeah like think i believe more i like there's things that i believe i have a different perspective on this time watching it and i think you always do that like whenever i that's why i like re-watching stuff honestly big part like one part of why i like rewatching it is it's a comfort i know what's going to happen it's probably a control thing but another reason is i love watching it from a new perspective and being like oh, last time i thought last time i watched this i thought that that was okay and last time I watched this, I thought that that person was in the right or last time I watched this. And like you watch it from this time and you're like, my perspective has changed so much. Like, how did I think that that person was at all in the right? Like, that was so naive of me or that was so immature of me or like, there's another thing where I think, 
I really hated a character because the writer and the way it's filmed, they make you want to hate that person. And then you come in, I don't know, like a couple of years later and you watch it and I just have so much more compassion and understanding. And I'm like, well, actually, it's not really as simple as just hating that character or that person being wrong. Or there's so many more things to think about or include. And yeah, like it's just so funny to watch things from another perspective. And that's why that is honestly part of why I love doing it is it's just kind of like it's a way to reflect on yourself in a really extreme strange way of doing that it is a way to reflect on yourself and i'm really yeah obviously enjoying pre little lighters currently at the place where so i'm i'm halfway through season four they've just gone to ravenswood this is like my favorite part so there were storylines where i was like like i say i didn't really like the idea of toby being a they were all storylines that i just felt like oh i can't wait to skip through these but i actually enjoyed them this time um and then there's other storylines that i like couldn't wait to get to like i know obviously that cc the whole like link between cc and being related to the de Laurentiis and like that whole thing unfolding I just remember thinking this is so like like I like the way that they they wrote that and I couldn't wait for that story to come um also I have definitely forgot a lot because I don't know why I felt like the whole CC Charles storyline was the end um but the the Charles storyline I was like I can't wait to get to this storyline like I thought that that was really interesting um and like Toby's mum I forgot about Toby's mum and I, don't, I was like, how did I forget this? this? is such a big part of the story. Um, and I love that storyline. I love how that all unfolds. Um, so that's right where I'm at. Toby's been chasing information about his mum from A. He's doing things that A wants him to do just so he can get information on his mum. Eddie Lamb, when he come into it, I was like, oh, I completely forgot about him, which is the guy that works at Radley who had a relationship with Toby's mom, Mona and Spencer, and he's a big part in unraveling that storyline. Um, so they're looking through that and they've just gone to Ravenswood for the first time and just found out that Ali is alive. Um, and now Ezra is a big question mark. So they, they're trying to find, I think it's called Boy, Boy Schultz or something like that, that you know Ali nicknames everyone that I can't, ever pronounce it but i think it's boy shorts they are trying to find him and you've just seen ali in the back garden so you know she's alive she turns around to the girls and she starts talking to the girls so you know she's alive and she then she's then like Shh, be careful like, like the guy i'm really scared of is here and she runs away and ezra comes around the corner and is like aria you forgot your phone so we as a viewer are like hold on a sec You've seen the uh, you've seen that um, you've also seen Ezra in an apartment with all this information around the walls and stuff um, of all the girls. Um, so you think currently you think he's a, but I from what I remember I don't think he is a. I think he's boy shorts. I think he's just had like a relationship with Ali. I can't remember whether he had a relationship with Ali. And he is boy shorts and he used Aria just to try and lead him to Ali and whether she's actually dead or whether he's just trying to tell A, like whether he wants to know. Same as like the kind of the Toby storyline. I can't really remember all the details. I love Caleb. I absolutely love Caleb. Like I, I reckon he is my favourite of the boyfriends. You know, I think he's such a like great character. I love like the development in him and his like home life. Um, I think he's like re a really good actor. Like Tyler Blackburn's a really good actor. There's really like emotional scenes that he's in with like when his dad comes back and he like starts shouting at him and he's like really emotional and he's like, do you want to know the proof that I have? The proof I have is all the missed birthdays. And like he goes into this little monologue and it's like really powerful. And I think he conveyed that so well. Um, and I think like considering the upbringing that he's had the characteristics that he has is incredible like he's so loyal to hannah like he would do anything for her he's so protective like i just like the qualities that he has and the traits that he has like he's never really he's never made an agreement with a ezra was doing well until season four obviously but yeah like i would just question like why is ezra really in aria's life like with toby it 
Like, I get why he would want information, but the fact that he could lie to Spencer that well for that long is questionable to me. Do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like any of Emily's partners. I don't mind Paige, but again, like, there's a lot of history that I just think is big red flags that we romanticise in things like this in TV shows, but in reality, do you know what I mean? I liked Maya, but again, I just thought Maya was quite disrespectful. Like, there's an episode where they go to dinner with her mum, and I just think the way that she spoke about things that she knew she shouldn't, and like, she was just really disrespectful and unaware of her environment. And But yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. I'm probably gonna watch a bit of that later. I've also just started a new house on Sims that I'm building, so I'll probably do that. Um, I also found this page the other day, which was so cool, and it's these two girls that literally have a YouTube where they just film themselves building Sims houses, and they have, like, every package, every add-on. They do this, like, wheel that they spin, and whatever it lands on is the aesthetic that they have to do that room in, or, like, they give themselves these challenges, and it's really cool. Like, they did this underground tree house, which was so cool. Um, they made, like, a double-decker bus. Like, they do all these extreme challenges, as well as, like, regular houses or flats and all these different things, and they also do, like, price challenges. So it might be, like, they're going to try and build a whole house for a certain budget. So I just thought it was really, really cool. Um... I sent it to my best friend as well because she loves building houses on Sims. Um, and she was like, oh my God, thank you for sharing. Like she thought it was really cool as well. So yeah, it's in the bio below if you want to have a look. So um, yeah, I'm just going to carry on with a few bits. Hi guys. So I'm just editing this video and I just wanted to film a little outro as I didn't currently have one. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. I honestly appreciate every single view. Thank you for all my new subscribers. Hi, I see everyone. Um, comment down below where you're from, a little bit about yourself. I'd love to get to know you. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel for more, I will see you guys in the next video.